Setters, welcome to today's Grade 11 Life Sciences Show, proudly brought to you by Macmillan. Today we have a special revision lesson on photosynthesis and cellular respiration. We have selected highlights from lessons shown early in the term to help you revise and prepare for your June exams. You can download the notes for today's show from learnextra.co.za forward slash live. Now it's time to get on with today's lesson. Please post your comments and questions on our Facebook page on facebook.com forward slash learn extra or on Twitter at learn extra so we can help you with your revision. Let's get into the big, the, the big part of this. Right, so this thing is a stem and it goes through photosynthesis because it's green. Right, so if I have a look at it all over, Little, little leaves are coming out because it's on the side, but the most important thing about this is that the stem is green. The stem has got the stuff called chlorophyll, right, or chloroplasts in it. Right, so I'm going to move this aside, and I'm going to start showing you different parts, or different leaves, should I say. This is a nice long leaf, right? It comes from a diacotyledonous plant. The reason why we know this, right, it's got parallel, net, uh, parallel venation um, inside it. Right? The veins run from the bottom all the way to the top in a long straight line as it goes on. Right? They do ask you this. This is from a diacotyledonous plant. Right? If I go to a monocotyledonous plant, there's one. Okay? You can see it's a net venation. It gets one long one, one main one, and it, the rest pop out from the sides and the veins go all over the place. Right? So that is a net and that is a parallel. Right? This one is a diacot, this one is a monocot. Okay? Llewellyn, yes. how do we explain the two colors on the parallel leaf? Nice. That's a very good question. We look at the leaves. Now, normally, if you go to a nursery, your mom and dad want to plant some beautiful flowers, and they go to the garden and say, okay, well, I've got some open space, right? There's nothing in the way. They need this beautiful plant to grow, and it must take a lot of sunlight, right? And if it needs a lot of sunlight, it's going to be a certain color green. If it, ha if it uh, is in a shady area, it's got a different color green, right? So the lighter they are, normally, is the more sun they can take. The darker they are, is the less sun they can take, right? Now, <coughs> I've got different leaves all over the place, so I'm going to show you all different colors. Now, one of the, also the main things that we can find is how they are situated or where they stand on the leaf, but we're going to get that now. I've just showed you parallel and net. Right, so move those across. It's nice and easy. Have a look at that. You were just talking about the different colors. Yeah. Look how nicely all the different colors are from here. Now, this leaf actually starts off as a very, very light green, right? All the green is the amount of chloroplasts inside there. Right, so very, very important. So this has got all different colors. It's got the light, it's got the dark, it's got the medium. So it can be in sunny areas and in shaded areas, right? So it can do everything. Okay, now have a look at this leaf. See, they all come in different shapes and sizes. Now, this is a leaf on its own. Now, is this one leaf or is, let me just have a look, this one leaf, that one, right? Or is... This tiny piece, if I break it off, I don't know if you can see it. Um, <laughs> they can't. I'm going to try to get it up. On my finger, right over there, hopefully you can get it. That is, is that one leaf. So these are three different things that I'm looking for. Now, you would know what the leaf is, but if you look inside by the stem, you will get this auxiliary bud. An auxiliary bud tells you whether it's the beginning of the leaf or if it's a whole leaf as one. Right? So let me try and show you that. Uh, auxiliary bud. There we go. I took a nice one there. Look at this. You see this big thing that comes out here? It's also leaves, also green. It's an auxiliary bud, right? This is where the leaf comes out. Okay, I'm just giving you an idea about leaves and how actually special they are. Right, so this one and this one is actually from the same plant. And look at the difference in colors already. It's just which one has been in the shade and which one's been in the sun. Which one has to have more chlorophyll to do more, um, to make more food. Right, okay. All the way. Now, look at this one. See, different leaves as well. Now, you would think that each and every one of these little things is a leaf. Right? This part is not a leaf. This part is one leaf. Okay, this is the same as that. Okay, they're the exact same thing. 
This one starts as an auxiliary bud this side. This one, auxiliary bud here. Yeah. If I had an auxiliary bud between each and every one of these leaflets, then it would be, this would be a leaf, then this would be a leaf, then this would be a leaf. This is one complete leaf. What they've done is they've taken the margins and take, taken it out. Right, there's the next one. Now, <coughs> what's the, have a look at the arrangement of these. Okay, I want to come to different arrangements now. Right, look at the arrangement of it. It's in a complete circle. Now, why do you think plants actually do that? Okay, there's one. It's a circle. I'm going to try and put it down here so you can actually see it. There's another one. Okay, look at the arrangement of it. Each one of these are individual leaves. Each and every one is an individual leaf. Remember, this one, this whole thing's a leaf. This one, individual things are leaves. Right. Let's go. This is a single leaf, also parallel venation. Okay? It's got little hooks on it to make sure that it gets protected. Okay? Let's see. I've got this. You've all seen this before, to be honest. This is the fern. We've spoken about the fern before. This is a single leaf, and each one of these little things, can you remember all of this? It's the rackets at the back. Okay, that's another leaf, but I'm going to put that aside. It's not the main thing I want to look at. What about this? Do you know that each and every one of these things are also leaves? Okay, this is leaf from a palm, oh, from a, um, uh, what's this thing, a gymnosperm, right? A cone-bearing plant, right? Now, these leaves can actually, each one of these little pins or little needles, they can last for three years on a plant, right? With these ones, they fall off in the middle of winter. Okay, they fall off in the middle of winter. These ones last for three years. Now, the reason why they're so thin is they don't want to let all the water go in there and actually freeze up. So they put a lot of very, very thin needles so that it doesn't freeze up too easily. Right. Now, this is the one I wanted to show you. Have a look at how these are sit situated. Can you see that you can actually see every single leaf? If I do that, this has been in the car, so I need to make sure that it works. You could actually see every single leaf, can you? Okay. The reason for that is this plant is doing the best it possibly can to do the most photosynthesis. Right, so this leaf is not going to cover that one because the minute it covers that one, how's it going to photosynthesize? So it moves to the side and it actually gives every single leaf its own space so that it can get to the sun. Right, that is very important. Same with these. Look, you'll see every single leaf. Okay, look at these. You'll see every single leaf. Now this one on a plant sticks up like that. This one on a plant sticks up like that, right? This one, on the other hand, it lies flat, so it does that. If it stood up straight like this, it wouldn't have this type of a nation, okay? It wouldn't have the way that it's standing here. It would be more that type of thing, right? So this is very important. Without these things, right, there's going to be a lot less photosynthesis taking place. Llewellyn? Okay. Yes, Knox? There's a very, very interesting question. Kamani says that she would like to know what it is that gives different um, plants different colors. Oh, so she's looking at the different things inside the plant. So if you look at it, normally your different greens are going to come by your chloroplast, right? Then you're going to get things like tonoplasts, right? Now, that is, comes along when you have the chloroplast actually leaving, and then you're going to get your brown leaves, right? That happens in autumn, okay? Now, that's not the only thing. You get the different colors where you have red leaves. I'm sure you've all seen it. It normally comes out in Christmas time, hey, Knox? Yeah. I'm sure you get this, where you get those dark green leaves, and then they've got this red leaf in the middle of nowhere. Right? Yeah. That is for beauty. Okay? It attracts things. That's a very important thing. Now, all that's got to do with hormones. Okay? And when we go into the plant later on and in more detail, you, I will show you the different parts, and I will explain to you how they all work. Right? But at the moment, all we're worried about is the green. The green is the most important. Without this green, we cannot survive, as in myself and you. Okay, yes, Knox. Anything else? Any other okay. last questions that there's, we can hear? There's Mukanya Ledzi, Omega Omega. He, the question is, what are the factors that affect the rate of photosynthesis? Ah, we're going to get to that. That is the important part. But I need to build up from photosynthesis first and show you what it's about and then explain how the rate or what affects it. Right. Knox, any other last ones before I think we need to um, go for a break? So far, that's all. That's it. Sure. Okay, now, before our little break, you've seen how nice and small our little leaves are. We go from this tiny little leaf, right, which is inside this part, 
right? And I think, which I'm sure I've got one in here somewhere, okay? And I think you need to see that you always get bigger leaves. Right. That's a big leaf. That is a big leaf, right? Now, these can photosynthesize, photosynthesize quite nicely. Now, the nice thing about this leaf is I use this all the time to teach with, right? I get a new one every time. I know that you see it's torn, but they actually do. It's part of it. It tears very easily, okay? This is a banana tree. You've all seen them, okay? A banana tree gets nice big leaves, and banana trees you normally find in places like KwaZulu-Natal and Durban, right? So it's quite moist, right? So if I had to ever show you plant tissue, in here you would see xylem and phloem cells so clearly it's quite easy. So if you want to go and study and do your plant tissues, make sure you try and get one of these and cut off the stem and actually you can see the xylem and the phloem quite nicely. I'm going to try to pull one off so you can actually see what I'm talking about. Um, let's see. There we go. Look how nice, hopefully you can zoom in quite nicely, look how nice you can actually see the xylem and phloem vessels, right? So that's quite nice, nice and simple. The bigger the leaf, the more you can see on it, right? So what I want you guys to do is get a nice little stretch, right? So when you come back, I can start giving you facts and we can take it from there. And the best way to understand is to ask questions. Okay, so let's have a look at it. Okay, give, let me just get a nice big pen here. I like certain pens. Give the correct word or term for each of the following things. It's a word. Okay, so let's have a look at it. The light independent stage of photosynthesis. The light independent. Okay, dependent means I need it. Independent means I don't need it. So it is the dark phase. Independent, where it is? Independent. Okay, so it is the dark phase. I'm just going to put DP so we can get there. Right, the dark phase. Remember, it doesn't need light. Next one, the green pigment found inside the chloroplasts. Okay, chloroplasts, remember, we find them in the leaves or the stems that I showed you, right? It's that green pigment. Now, that green pigment that we found inside is called chlorophyll. Okay, chlorophyll. Okay, there it is. I'm going to put it there. It's chlorophyll. Very simple. Next one, the molecule that is important, uh, uh, the, the important carrier, the molecule that's the important carrier, okay, of energy in the cell. It's very simple. Now, what molecule carries energy? Okay, we have the ATP, ATP, and the ADP. We've got the two. Right, which one is the carrier? Which one has the energy? That is the main thing. You guys are going to forget that. You're going to say, ah, ATP, that's right. Full marks, wrong. Okay? ADP is the carrier. ATP has the energy. Okay? Don't forget that. And I know you would have got confused with that. Hey, Knox? I would have. I See, would have. I, 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 had to get my, I had to get used to it. Right. Now, let's have a look. Uh, let's pull this down. The liquid inside the chloroplast, okay, the uh, byproduct of, oh, sorry, the liquid inside the chloroplast. Now, remember I said to you, the chloroplast starts like this. There it is. And then it's got these funny little things over here and a funny little thing over there. And it joins in there. And another one over there. And another one over there. And it joins in there. Can you remember what this is? This is a chloroplast. Okay. They want to know the liquid over here. Okay. Can you remember what that is? Okay, it's very simple. It's the, I'm going to try write it over here. It's the stroma. Okay, hopefully you can see that writing because no matter how close I go, it doesn't want to write quite nicely. So it's the stroma. Okay, let's see. The byproduct of photosynthesis. Knox, what's the byproduct of photosynthesis? We said it's oxygen. Oxygen <laughs> is the first one. Okay, oxygen is the first one. It's a byproduct. It gets made. It is given off. What is the other thing that is made? What do we want to make? Carbon dioxide. Co no, carbon dioxide is taken in. Byproduct oh, oh. is what we make. Okay, so we got C6H12. What's the last word? Come, I know that you've got that answer for me already. Knox, have they given me the answer? 
Hey? Glucose. Are you talking about the, 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 for, for the, the formula? That's it. What was the formula? It's okay. So we have Kamani. Yes. And his answer is C6H1206. Ah, 06. Very nice. Not 06. Sorry. It's 06. 06. Yeah. So it C6H1206. This is your. What is that, Knox? Glucose. Glucose. Very nice. C6H1206. Okay. That is it. And list the raw materials that photosynthesizes plants gets from the environment. What are the raw products? Okay, water, carbon dioxide, and sunlight. Very nice. Okay, guys, I hope you're enjoying this revision session. If you are struggling and need help, remember to post on the page or send an email to helpdesk at learnextra.co.za. Now it's time for a break, so don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back, guys. I hope you are getting into the idea of revision. Please let us know how you are doing. I'd love to chat to you on the page or on Twitter. Enough of the chat. Let's get back to revision now. The starch test. Now, everything we do, we do with a starch test. Okay, so let's have a look. What do we have? What do we need, should I say? What do we need? Okay, we need a beaker. Okay, there it is. A beaker containing water. Now remember in the beginning I started off with something. A beaker containing water. Okay? We need a tripod stand and wire gauze. Remember I put that big tripod thing out, right? And I put that wire gauze on top and then I put the beaker on top. Can you remember that? We'll get back in a few minutes. Right? We need a Bunsen burner or a spirit burner. I put out a Bunsen burner. Okay, and if you don't know what a spirit burner is, I'm going to show you as well. I brought one just to show you because I'm feeling nice. Right, nice. Then you need a test tube containing methylated spirits or alcohol. It's fine. Okay, you need forceps to hold certain things. Yes, you need a white towel. We're not going to use a white towel. I brought some, um, some, some plastic to put it on so that you can see it quite nicely, right? Yes, you need iodine because what does iodine actually do, right? Iodine makes you um, see where starch is. It goes blue-black color when it's with starch, right? And then you need a dropper or a pipette. I just bought a dropper. Why do you think we need a dropper, right? We've got to pick the iodine up with something and it stains your fingers. Okay, so let's have a look what I have here for you. Let me just get there. There we go. Look, can you remember... I took a leaf, yes, I put it inside of a beaker, on top of a tripod stand, tripod meaning three legs, we have a Bunsen burner, okay, and we are waiting, forget about the next picture, we're just doing that, okay, so let's go have a look how it's doing quickly before we come back, just two minutes, okay, so <coughs> here we are, right, nice and simple, can you see it's boiling, can you see what color this, this, uh, whole system's going, okay? Now, it is going nice and green, but do you know why we actually do this, okay? It's very important. If we don't do this step, the whole step is not gonna help us. Right, so I'm gonna let it boil a bit more. I wanna get you a couple of things. So, I've got forceps. Remember, what does forceps hold, okay? It grabs hold of one of these things. I've got you somewhere, um, uh, let me see, I know I have one here. Somewhere, there we go, ha, test tube. Okay, holds a test tube. I'm gonna put the test tube over here, hopefully it doesn't roll away. Okay, I've got a thing called a spirit burner, so that you can see what it looks like. And the spirit burner burns quite nicely. There it goes, right. It burns quite nicely and quite easy. But look at the flame difference, right? If you can see the flame difference, look at it. That's why I took this one, it burns nice and quickly. Okay, so let me kill that. There we go. Then, methylated spirits. It's a purple liquid, okay? It burns if you put it on open wounds, okay? This catches fire quite easily. So you must be very careful with the open flame and methylated spirits, right? Okay, then I've got something to remove the leaf out of the hot water, okay? Because I ain't sticking my fingers in there, okay? It'll cook. Right, cool. And then I've got, let's see, iodine. Right, I've got iodine. I have got 
methylated spirits inside a big test tube, right? Then <coughs> I've cheated. I've brought another beaker, and in that beaker, I just want to put the methylated spirits so it doesn't fall over, okay? Then I've got my little dropper. And lastly, uh, you normally get glowing splints, but I thought I'd go a little bit easy on you guys. And I went outside, and I picked up two pieces of sticks. Right, just plain, simple sticks. Now, what I'm going to do with this at the end, okay, just to demonstrate, I'm going to light it, right, just going to give it a bit of flame there, give it a bit of smoke, and we're going to test something with that because we need to know how to test oxygen, okay, for later on. So, what else do I have? That's it. And then, of course, i got a spare leaf to show you what it started off with. Right, okay, so let's have a look. Okay, I'm going to turn this off. Okay, let's turn this off. Let's have a look. Okay, it's looking a little bit flaccid and soft. It's looking a little bit better. You need to boil this for as long as possible. I think I can leave it in for a little bit longer while I talk to you and tell you about it, right? Now, why do we boil it? Do you, can, can you tell me why we boil it by any chance? Just take a wild guess. Why do you think we would boil this? I want to see maybe the photo, what, what happens during photosynthesis. Photo yes, we want to do that, but we need to, we need to actually have a look at, we need to look what's happening inside. Okay. And if I have a look what's happening inside, I need to break down the outer wall. Okay, and the outer wall's got the cellulose around it. Can you remember when we do cells, we've got that cell wall, right? Now that cell wall needs to be broken down. I want to get into the inside of the cell. So I need to break this thing down quite nicely. Okay, if I break this down nicely, then I can get through to the leaf itself. Now, how am I going to have a look at this leaf? I need to look at this leaf very closely and very carefully. You can see the water's going green. Okay, so let's, let's try it. Okay, let us try it. Okay, so let's turn this thing off. If I remember how to turn it the right way. Okay, so there we go. We're stopping it. Okay, we're all happy. We're stopping it. Now... I'm going to remove this so it comes to the other side. Remember, this will be hot now, so you keep away from it. Okay, move that away. Okay, and I'm going to leave it up here for a few minutes. Okay, now, I'm going to grab this leaf out. There we go. Here's the one. It's nice and hot. Okay, and it is quite flimsy. Look at this now. Okay, it's quite flimsy. It can be moved. Uh, have you noticed I've got this thing on it? Did you even notice that? Now, let's look at the original one and look at the thing I've got on here. There's an L for Lou. Huh? Look at that. How cool is that? I put my name on it. Now, I did this. I put this L on yesterday at about 8 o'clock. No, it was about 9 o'clock. Right. So what I did was I covered this part to see what would happen if it, that piece did not get any photosynthesis, if it did not photosynthesize, if it did not get sunlight. Right. That's why I did that, okay? And I chose this one to have a good look at it. Because remember, we spoke about different color leaves, and we saw the different colors, and would green photosynthesize, will no green photosynthesize? We want to have a look at that. Okay, so I've just taken them out the water, okay? And I've put them there. Let's go to the board. <coughs> now, have a good look. The next step is I need to put it these leaves, inside this test tube, right? Inside the test tube in methylated spirits. Now, can you see it's still inside this beaker that we heated up? Can you see it? Now, why would I not go put the methylated spirits over the flame? Can you tell me? What do you think would happen? If I put methylated spirits over the flame, what do you think? I think it will just... Explode this one. Nah, it was <laughs> close. Clo if I cover it, maybe. But yes. that's exactly what happens. Remember I said to you guys, we have a Bunsen burner, right? And we have a spirit burner. What did we put inside the spirits? We put methylated spirits. Now, as soon as I put a light or, or, or lit the top of it, what happened? There was a flame. So if I put methylated spirits close to an open flame, what's going to happen? It's going to catch a light. Okay. <laughs> So, we're back. I just put it on to boil to keep it nice and warm. Now, what I'm going to do, okay, is I'm going to slow this down, 
Okay, I'm going to slow it down almost to nothing, just so we can keep the heat going. Come on, switch off. You don't want to switch off. It's fine. Let it go. It's looking good. There we go. Okay, so now that it's switched off, this stuff is very, very important. Now, remember that this has a less of a boiling point. In other words, if I had to put this and water ne next to each other and boil them, this one would boil faster. Okay, so I'm going to put that down there. I'm going to grab this leaf over here, and I'm going to put it in methylated spirits. Remember, there's two leaves. Okay, so let me put it in. Twist it and fold it and, and, and try and get it nicely and stick it in, because that's what we need. Stick it in, stick it in, stick it in. Let's go, let's go. Rise. Right, you see it's rising, huh? See it's rising all the way, all the way. Okay, my fingers are not that long. Right, and I'm going to take this one as well, and I'm going to stick it in. And let's see. There we go. Push it in there. Come, you can do it. There we go. You see, I've pushed it all the way in nice and low. Okay, now, the key thing about this, trust me on this, okay? I need to heat this up. Okay, this alcohol actually, sorry, this alcohol actually, gets rid of the chloroplast, okay? We need to get rid of that green stuff so we can actually see what's going on. So, this is not the right thing to use. This one is, but this is nice and big. So what I've done is I've got one of these nice little holders, okay? Normally goes on a retort stand. I thought that would be nice. I'm not gonna crush it, nice and gentle, okay? A little bit tighter. <coughs> okay, and I'm gonna put it inside. Okay, and I'm going to let it go, and I'm going to leave it there. Let's see. Can you see that it's going to... See how the bubbles are already coming? I don't know if you can see it, but have a look how the bubbles are already coming. Okay? See how the alcohol is getting so hot already. Can you see that? Oh, hopefully you can. Okay? I'm going to just hold it there nicely so that you can see how the, the, how the alcohol is actually already starting to bubble because it has a lower boiling point. In other words, it's going to boil a lot faster. Okay? So we need to let it boil to get rid of all that carb uh, all that, uh, that, that chlorophyll. Right, so all the chlorophyll. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna let it boil there for a few minutes, hopefully it doesn't fall. Okay, and we're gonna go back. Right, so, while we're back here, okay, it's very easy. I've boiled it, okay? Very, I don't put it on an open flame. I leave the flames alone, we don't need it. That's why we've got hot water, right? So, we boil it in there. Then we take these leaves out, and I want you to remember, I want you to look at it very carefully, okay? When we take these leaves out, you're going to notice something very, very, very important, okay? The methylated spirits is going to change color to green, and the leaves that are going to come out are not going to be as green, maybe slightly green, but it's going to be a mucky color, okay? Then we need to get rid of, we need to get rid of all this alcohol that's left behind, so we're going to dip it in the water again, yeah? In the beaker of water, as soon as I get a nice pink color, in the beaker of water, okay? And once, rinse off all that stuff, okay? And then we're gonna put it down, and then we're gonna do the test. Okay, so that is it. This is the starch test. This you use to test whether the whole thing has gone through photosynthesis. It doesn't matter what the experiment is. If they ask you to see if it goes through dark leaves, or light leaves, or if you cover a leaf, or if you put it inside a dark room, or whatever, it doesn't matter, because at the end of that whole experiment, to be able to test where the photosynthesis took place, this is the key one. Okay, it's very, 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 very important. Right, okay, so let's go back. Now you can see it. Have a look. Look how the stuff is boiling like it's, like it's, it's job. Hey, eh? look at that, let's see. Look at that. It's boiling so well, and I haven't used this much fire, okay? Boils very quickly. It's very important to remember that. And if this boils, have a good look. If I lift it, look how green it's gone already, okay? I'll take a methylated spirit. Remember, it's nice and purple, right? And this stuff is all of a sudden gone nice and green. Can you see? I don't want to lift it too high. Let's keep this thing boiling. Okay, so it's very important to get this off. Remember, we need to see what is going on in there. Okay, so let's, let's see. Hopefully, I've left it long enough. There's other ones I want to do as well. So I'm going to remove it. There we go. I'm going to move it to over here. Remember, this is not the real place where you put it. You normally put this, okay? You normally put it in a, retort, uh, in a, um, uh, a stand, okay? Because that stand holds them nicely. But I've got to make sure that you see, so I wanted it in an open thing so you can actually see what's going on. Okay, so 
Now we don't want to burn our fingers. Now you've seen the alcohol was going at, and I can smell my fingers are full of alcohol through this mess. So it, it stinks, right? So let's see if I can get it out. And it's going to take too long, so I'm going to cheat again, as always, right? And I'm going to pour it out. Okay, pour. Come on, come on. You can do it. Come, come. That's it. You're doing it. You're doing it. It's very hot. Trust me. And it's coming. There we go. I've got this leaf out. Now, from here, I'm going to put it straight into the water, okay? So you can see what I'm doing. It's nice and hard. Putting it in the water. There we go. It's in the water. While that is getting rid of all the other rubbish, have a look how green that is. Hey? It's a green... And whoo! It's... Come over here and have a smell of this. It's <coughs> ridiculous. Right? Just have a good whiff of that. We can, we can get unbelievably drunk just it. with this. Yes, hey? yes. And it's green. All the chlorophyll is gone. All the chlorophyll is gone. So I'm going to remove this so we can actually see what's going on. We're going to dip it and we're going to rinse it and we're going to go as much as possible. Mm. Let's see if we can get this right. I don't know how much chlorophyll has been left, but we can go come, dip, dip, undo it. Okay, let's have a look. Let's see the difference in the green afterwards. It could have gone a little bit longer in that alcohol. But let's open it up. Okay, I'm going to remove this part so that you can see the owl's gone. Now, it's still green. I could have left it a little bit longer. But look at the difference. Okay, it's completely different. This is much darker than this one. Right, so I'm going to put that down there. Okay, I'm going to push it out. I need to get this one out. This is a very nice one, hopefully. There we go. Also nice and see-through, right? You can still see a little green. There it is. Okay, now, let's have a look. I'm going to spread them out here. If you can come nice and close, you can actually see what's going on. It'll be 10 times better. Let me remove this so that it's out of the way. Up, and get a bit of strength, right? Be careful when you move this. This is very hot. Okay, I'm going to move that out the way so that we can see. And the weight, because we need some muscles, right? And we're left with this. So, let's see. Dropper, iodine. Okay. Now, iodine stains. So, be careful with it. Now, it stains quite a bit. So, if you have a look at my hand, look at my hand looks like now. Right? So, it does stain your hand. If it stains your hand, it's not going to come off very easily. Okay. So, now I need to have a look. If I spray it on here... Sure, we can get a tissue just now. I almost took water instead of iodine, right? That's not good. And you will see the difference. Hopefully, I've boiled it for long enough because I want to do all these experiments as quick as possible so you can actually see what is going on. Right, so let's get it going. And I'm not scared of iodine. And if my wife doesn't like it, it doesn't matter. So make sure she sees it. Let's see. All over the place. And... This one could have gone a little bit more, but this one, look at this. Look at the blue-black color. Can you see? The outside, if you look at it carefully, the outside, there's no blue-black color. The inside where it was green. Can you remember the green one? Okay. The inside has gone black. The outside has not gone black. So the question is, if it is black, it means photosynthesis took place, right? If it is not black, if it's normal, I mean, do I have starch in my body? Hey, no. Look what my hands look like. Okay, nice and simple. My hands are not stained. Well, they're stained, but they're not blue black. This is blue black, which means there is starch present. Now it's time for a break, so don't go away. We'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back from the break. I know you can't wait for the term to end and the July holidays to start. And of course, that means winter school. This year, we will be repeating all the Term 2 Learn Extra Live shows for you from the 24th till the 28th of June, from 9 a.m. in the morning till 7 p.m. at night. So don't miss out. Go to our website, www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn forward slash extra forward slash winter school to get all the details and to download the notes for each lesson. But for now, let's get back to today's revision lesson. Over to you. 
nice and easy. The definition of cellular respiration. Now, guys, this can be more complex. I've made it into a nice, simple, simple form. Okay, so let's have a look at it. It's the chemical, it's the simply put chemical energy, if I get my pen right, chemical energy is transferred to ATP. Now, remember, ATP, I'm always talking about ATP. That is where we get our energy from, right? And the chemicals we're talking about is very simple. It's called glucose. Okay, remember when we stick food in our mouth and all of that? We had a look at your starches and uh, your, your carbohydrates, and remember it makes it into a sugar, which is glucose. That's what we're looking for. Proteins go to the muscles. This is the food. This is where we get our energy, glucose and um, well, starch and carbohydrates. Okay, so that's why people say you mustn't eat so much of it because you're going to get fat if you don't do exercises. Okay, there we go. And the ATP molecules provide energy, as a simple, for the process of all the cells. Nice and easy. That is the definition of cellular respiration. Okay, then, if I bring this down, this whole system, this making of energy, happens in the mitochondria. Now, when you were much younger, and all the younger sub subjects, you always knew about the mitochondria being the powerhouse of the cell. Can you remember that? I can remember that. That's nice and easy. You should re remember that. Powerhouse of the cell. The one that goes through photosynthesis is, can mm. you remember? Mm, I can. Chloroplasts, yeah. right? Nice and easy. <laughs> <laughs> this one is very important, okay? This is the powerhouse of the cell. And if I have a look at it, you'll see two membranes. Okay, you'll get the outer membrane, which is, let's say, that, no, let's get a nicer color here, a uh, bit of a pink, if I can find it, there it is, a bit of pink, there's the outer membrane, and there's an inner membrane that has folds in it. Okay, the inner membrane that has folds, this is where stuff's going to happen, okay, that inner membrane is called your Christi, oh, Christa, Christa, sorry, your Christa, okay, and inside, so this area here, okay, I'm going to leave for you guys to answer it because I know I haven't put it anywhere. So please send an, uh, on Facebook. It is Facebook. Yes, it is Facebook. Send on Facebook. I want to know the, uh, the answer to that. And right. I'll be waiting for the answer. That's it. So I'm not going to give it until we get to the end and no one gets it. And then I'll give it to you. Okay. Right. Okay. So that is very important. Now, a micrometer. Can you see it says underneath here, micrometer? Okay. You guys should know mic micrometer quite easily. Okay. A micrometer. How do you display micrometers? Remember, millimeters is two M's. And kilometers is km, right? Micrometers, very simple. It looks like a P first, right? And then it's got meter, yes. The only problem is it's not going to be PM, is it? Okay, so I'll show you how we actually do it. What you do is if I get the eraser and I do that and I take that piece out, can you see it? That is called your micrometer. That's how they display it. It looks like a half P mixture with an M, okay? That's a mi micrometer, okay? Hopefully you don't, don't forget it. Let's go into the crux of the matter now, and we start looking at aerobic respiration, okay? Now, you get your anaerobic and you get your aerobic, okay? Aerobic gives us a lot more energy. Anaerobic doesn't, okay? Anaerobic normally happens when you do, the best way I normally explain it is, Anaerobic is doing a 100-meter sprint or 50-meter sprints. You don't need to breathe, okay? If you're doing the comrades, you go through aerobic respiration, which means you need air. So while they're making energy, to make this energy, you have to do the most important thing. Are oh, you watching? I'm going to show you. <sighs> I can see you moving with me there, <laughs> right? You've got to breathe. You need the oxygen. It's very important. Right. So this whole system has got to do with oxygen. Okay. So let's have a look at it. We need to make ATPs, as it says, as many ATPs as possible. The more ATPs we have, the more energy we've got. Okay. So this whole concept is very simple. Let's bring it down. We have this simple little molecule, okay, C6H12O6. You have to know that one, C6H12O6. And that there is a glucose molecule. So if we start off here, we take in a glucose molecule, right? The starch, the carbohydrates, the normal sugar, the sweets, the, all of those things, right? The glucose molecule, right? We also need to take in this O2 molecule, which is oxygen. 
Okay? And from there, now we need to go to anaero uh, aerobic respiration. So the enzymes and all of that. Aerobic respiration. And what do we have at the end? What do we breathe out? Kat, what do we breathe out? Carbon dioxide. There we go. Carbon dioxide. Okay. What do we drink? Water. Water. Now, if you have a look at it, if you go to your mother's um, mirror, and don't tell her I told you this, <laughs> and you go, <sighs> what can you do on it? You can draw <laughs> funny little patterns. <laughs> right. Now, that there is moisture, and that is water. So, we give off water. We give off carbon dioxide. And at the end of this whole process, this is very important, we end off with 38 ATPs. That is a lot of energy. A lot. And I want you to remember 38. Because when it comes to the anaerobic, it's not as much. There actually only is two, which is a big difference. You, you get where I'm coming from? Okay, so that is the whole sum that you need. And if you have a look at it, it's actually a balanced equation. Okay? Now, a balanced equation means you've got these other numbers in front. It means if I've put in uh, six, well, actually, yeah, 12 hyd hydrogen, it's got to be, if I put in 12 hydrogen here, there'll be 12 hydrogen there. Can, can you get where I'm coming from? It's just a balance. Okay, now, I'm going to try and go through this because this is one of my favorite sections. Okay, this is one of my favorite sections. And that means that I'm going to try and explain it to you as much as possible. And also remember that I'm going to, most importantly, I'm going to show you some stuff. And for me to make you understand it, I'm going to add in a little bit more. Right? And I'm going to tell you if it's not used or you don't have to use it but it'll make you understand better. Right, so please stick with me. Let's start off with this. Okay, this here, there are three stages in aerobic respiration. Three stages. They work with each other, okay? The respiration, namely glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, and oxidative phosphorylation. Those are the three. Okay, now, you must understand, without the one, you can't have the other. Okay, the most important one, of course, is the glycolysis. You need that. And once you have that stuff and you have oxygen, you can move on to the next section. Once you've moved on to the next section, you can move on to the next section. You, you, you with me? Okay, so, something to remember. If you have oxygen, you can carry on going. If you don't have oxygen, we need to stop at a certain point. Cellular respiration. Now, that is German, right? It's not as bad as you think. If you were with me last week and we went through it, you will understand it very, very easily. So I'm going to help you one more time and we're going to get through it like this. Right, let's have a look at it. In the beginning, you get glucose. There it is. What is glucose? Remember, the plant made it. Right, we're going to take in glucose and to break glucose down into a simple fruit like sugar. It's called fructose, right? We use ATP. So we take ATP or energy and we break it down and we use it energy to break off and to make it into a simply compound, right? And that is where you get your two three carbon compounds. Yes? Okay. Now, the two three carbon compounds, if I had to do it this way, uh, it, was a, it was a six carbon compound and it's split into two three carbon compounds. I'm just going to write them there because it's unstable when it's fructose. It doesn't like being, or fruct fructose, it doesn't like being a long chain. It breaks up into two, okay? Now, for the two carbon compound to get down to a specific acid that we can use and make energy out of, okay, it's called pyruvic acid. Just by moving to pyruvic acid, we're going to make two ATPs, right? On the one side, we're going to make two ATPs, right? And on the other one, we're also going to make two ATPs. And we're going to make NADH. Now, NADH is, NAD is a carrier and hydrogen, of course, energy-rich hydrogen. So we're going to make two NADHs. Nice, easy, simple. Okay, I'm just running through this because this is the type of stuff that you're going to be asked in your tests. Right, so there we go. Then the pyruvic acid, this one, okay, it gets sent to this big thing here. It's called the, it's called the Krebs cycle. But before it, pyruvic acid, before it gets to there, right, it's got to lose something. It's got to be broken down any, uh, further, right? So the first thing it does is we gain another eight, uh, NADH molecule, 
right? And it gives off, it releases two carbon dioxide molecules. So what have we made already? Carbon dioxide. Okay? We've made carbon dioxide, so we're giving that off into the atmosphere. Remember, plants took it in and gave off oxygen. We're giving off carbon dioxide. Okay, then we're going to go into this Krebs cycle. Now, the Krebs cycle, you don't need to know in the detail that I've put it here. All you need to know is in the Krebs cycle, okay, we make three NADHs, okay, and we make two, well, one FADH per Krebs cycle. And remember, there's three. Oh, there's two of them. Right, so that's why they say two NADH. 2 NADH, 2 NADH, and 2 FADH. That means there's 6 NADHs in here. There is 4 F A, or oh, it should be A, D, H, 2s. There's 4 of them. Okay. And then, of course, we've got the ones here from the top. Not too difficult. Very easy. I'm trying to like, let you understand this as quick as possible because there's other things I want to throw in there as well, okay? And then, that was just soma. That was just to make something, okay? Now we need to take that stuff and make energy. We need energy. And what, how do we have energy in our body? ATP. Can you remember? It's always ATP, okay? We send it through to the electron transport system, okay? And for every NADH, I normally say it's like stairs. So if I do this, there it is, stairs. For every N, A, D, H, right? For every N, A, D, H that jumps down, jumps one, two, three. Every time it goes there, every time it jumps, right? It makes A, T, P. A, <laughs> T, P. I'm trying to write it. A, T, P. It makes three ATPs for every NADH, okay? And then for every FADH, it only makes two. It's a little bit weaker than NADH. Right, so FADH makes two, and NADH makes three, okay? And in this whole process, this whole process, we make, at the end of this whole process, I'm going to tell you now, over here, remember we made two ATPs, and two ATPs means four, but we wanted to take two, to replace the two that we used up here. Can you remember it? Okay, that means you gained two. So in this part, in glycolysis, we gained two ATPs. Simple, easy, let's relax. In the whole cellular respiration, or this whole thing, okay, whole thing together, we make 38 ATPs. So when you count it, there's two here, okay, then we're going to have a look at, there's one that's made over here, another ATP molecule that's made over here, so there's another two. So there's two ATPs over here, which makes it four ATPs already. And then two, four, six, eight, eight times three, and then you've got two times two, right? And then you've got another two here, and you've got another two there. So it all comes up to 38 ATP. I know it sounds so confusing at the moment, right? But I promise you, sit down, have a look at the notes. It's not as difficult as you think. Just relax, breathe, and you can do this. It's very simple. Okay, so that is what happens. Glycolysis, as I said, we gets happened in the, all of this gets happened in the mit mitochondria. Very important. It happens in your mitochondria, right? Phosphorylation happens at when we use it gets used in oxidative phosphorylation. That is the electron transport system that I was talking about. Right? The Krebs cycle, as I said, I've explained it. It gives off carbon dioxide as well. And we're making NADH and FADH2s. Okay? And then the last one is oxidative phosphorylation. That's where we actually make the energy or the ATP. Okay? Now, the sum, let's watch this carefully. This is where it becomes important. Okay? We take glucose and oxygen, and we give off water, carbon dioxide, and we gain ATP. So we keep that, right? We give that off to the atmosphere, because you can feel it. 
and you give that off to the atmosphere. So carbon dioxide is given off and oxygen is used. Okay, that is what I wanted to speak about. That's where we come to the crux of the matter. I changed that for a reason, so just relax. Okay, now, if you have a look at it, if plants are going through photosynthesis and taking in carbon dioxide and giving off oxygen, right, and we are taking in oxygen and giving off carbon dioxide, do you not think that's a balance? Dooney, what do you think? That's just a balance, eh? If a plant takes in oxygen and humans take in, you know, it, it's, it's a balance. Everything works so nicely together. It's, it's nice. It's a complete nice balance. But we're not going to do that. Because what do we do? We go through forestation. We cut down the forests. And if we're cutting down the forests, right, if we cut down the forests, we the less plants to take away the carbon dioxide. And why do we cut down forests? Because we need space to live, or we want expensive furniture, or things like that, do you, or firewood. Do you, do you understand what I'm trying to say? So cutting down forests, I mean, you can plant a small little tree. It's going to take years to become nice and big and do as much photosynthesis as the big rainforests are doing. Right, so that's the first thing. That's just putting it out there. There's something small. And then one of the important things we have to have a look at, right, is this. It's a video clip. It's short. It's simple, and it's going to tell you something that is quite important. So watch it nice and carefully. The carbon crisis in 90 seconds. This is a banana. This is a chunk of coal. The banana is sweet and delicious, fun to eat. The coal is none of those things. But they are much more alike than they seem. Both were made by plants and store energy from the sun and carbon gas from the air around us. When you eat the banana, you use the energy stored in the banana to run and jump, and you release carbon gas back into the air around you. Now, carbon in the banana is young, fast carbon. Just weeks ago, the banana was carbon gas in the air, and hours after you eat it, you breathe out the same carbon back into the air. When we burn coal and power plants, we use the energy stored in the coal to generate electricity that powers homes and factories, and we release carbon gas back into the air around us. However, the carbon in the coal is old, slow carbon. Plants took the coal carbon out of the air hundreds of millions of years ago. That carbon has been locked up ever since, and would stay locked up if people hadn't dug up the coal and burned it. So now, by burning coal and oil, people are adding lots and lots of old carbon to the atmosphere faster than plants in the oceans can take it out. Why do I care? Because carbon gas in the atmosphere acts like a blanket, trapping heat and making the whole planet warmer. Hi, my name is Peter, and I'm an Earth scientist at NASA. At NASA, we use satellites to study the Earth and how it's changing. And we can see that the ice caps and the glaciers are melting, and that the land and the atmosphere and the ocean are getting warmer. So I know that it's important that we are very careful about how we produce and use energy so that we burn less fossil fuels so we can keep the planet from getting too warm. Right. <clears throat> Did you understand that? Did you see how important that is? So even though we are breathing out and we've got that balance between the plants and the animals, right? We, as humans, are destroying the earth because we're burning things like fossil fuels. And everything that we burn creates carbon. And the more carbon we produce in the atmosphere, the warmer it gets. The more we go through global warming, the more the ice caps melt. And if the ice caps melt, the sea rises. You, are you understanding what I'm, what, how I'm getting this right? I mean, plants, we're making less plants. We're killing off the plants, right, so that we can have space to live. And if there's space to live, there's less plants. And if there's less plants, the less it can change the carbon dioxide back into oxygen. We've come to the end of today's show. Thanks to Macmillan for making the show possible. And thank you for joining me and for participating in this revision session. Remember to visit our website, learnextra.co.za forward slash live to get the notes and to watch the videos. If you are stuck on any questions, send an email to helpdesk at learnextra.co.za and tell us where you are stuck. All the best for your exams.